Hey everyone! Today we are starting a series of videos in which I combine two of my favourite ever things, science and beauty and makeup and skincare stuff. It should be exciting. We are going to be looking at the science behind everything I slather on my face. Which sounds a little bit gross when I put it like that, but it's going to be good, or hopefully interesting, or at least fun. I hope. I'm going to start the series with quite a simple one, but looking at one of my favourite products that I use every single day. Micellar water. I genuinely don't remember this stuff being around back when I first started really experimenting with makeup and playing with makeup. Um, or even in like my first few years of uni, I don't remember seeing it anywhere. But these last couple of years, like, I've been using this maybe three, not this bottle, but micellar water in general. I've been using it for maybe like three years now. And in that time and the time before then, like, I have seen it just pop up everywhere. Like, every shop, every supermarket, every, like, healthcare shop, beauty shop, makeup shop. It seems like every brand sells some kind of micellar water. Um, it's sometimes called micellar cleansing water, sometimes just cleansing water. Sometimes you might see it as beauty water. But the thing is, it honestly just looks like a bottle of water. It's just when you shake it up, it gets a bit bubbly. So really, what does it do? And how can it do anything? And is it more than just water? Well, yes, it is. Spoiler. <laughs> the idea behind micellar cleansing water is that it's a cleanser that you don't have to rinse from your face. You can do, but you don't have to. It breaks down and removes any makeup or dirt or excess oils on your skin. Um, and removes them in a way that is really, really gentle. So you don't have to scrub your skin, you don't cause any damage to it. It's really gentle, really good for your skin. It's safe to use on your entire face, including your eyes and your lips. And what I really like about it is that it's super affordable. There are more expensive brands, but this one that I use, I normally buy on sale and it's like $1.99. For a huge bottle like this, which usually lasts me three to four months. The problem with this is the brand I use is Garnier, which do test on animals, which I'm not really okay with. Um, I am looking for a cruelty-free alternative, but at the minute my supermarket near me just doesn't stock any, so I'm kind of stuck using this for now until I can find something online, but I'm gonna use up what I have. I tend to kind of like <laughs> buy it in bulk when it's on sale, so I've had a few bottles. This is my last one that I'm down to now. Um, and I'm probably going to be looking for an alternative when this is done. Anyway, the point is, micellar water. Pair a bottle like this, which is like $1.99, with a pack of cotton wool pads like these. A pack of like 100 of these is like 99p, and honestly, I think it is the easiest and cheapest way to remove makeup. It is great. It's no joke to say I use this stuff every single day, sometimes several times a day when I'm filming a video, or several videos, or I'm going out, or whatever. So if it's not just water, what exactly is in here? What is this stuff? The label reads that apparently this works because the micelles, which are cleaning agents, it says, capture impurities like a magnet and lift dirt away from the skin. But what the hell are micelles? I mean, not micelles, but like, my cells. So to give you an official definition, my cells are an aggregate of surfactant molecules dispersed in a liquid colloid. A lot of big words, a lot of jargon. To put this more simply, what this means is my cells are kind of little spherical bundles of molecules called surfactants. Surfactants have a hydrophilic head, which means they're attracted to water, and a hydrophobic tail, meaning that they repel water. The tail parts are also said to be uh, lipophilic, which means they're attracted to oils. Because of this structure, when they're suspended in water, like they are in something like micellar water, they form these little sphere-like structures where all the hydrophilic heads kind of form around the outside and kind of bundle together, and all the hydrophobic tails bundle on the inside so they don't have to touch the water. If we look at the ingredients of this bottle of micellar water, for example, you'll see that after um, water or aqua, which is a top ingredient, the second most prolific ingredient in this is hexylene glycol, which is a water-soluble surfactant. Where micellar water gets clever is when you pour it on a cotton wool pad. This is surprisingly a big part of how it works, using it with cotton wool. So if you kind of just poured this on your face and tried to rub it in, probably wouldn't have the same effect. It definitely wouldn't be as effective. But when you pour it onto a little cotton wool pad like this, the cotton wool itself soaks up the water. The cotton wool is also hydrophilic. So the hydrophilic heads on the surfactants in the micellar water get buried into the cotton wool and their little lipophilic tails stick up out of the cotton wool. They're kind of pointing away, which means when you rub it on your face, those little lipophilic tails 
are the bits touching your skin. A bunch of the makeup products you use and skincare products you use are oil-based, along with any excess natural oils on your skin that you might want to get rid of because the excess oils can clog your pores and cause damage and so on. So this means as you pass the cotton wool pad with the micellar water over your skin, these little tails are picking up the dirt, the makeup, the excess oil, and anything that shouldn't really be there. They're breaking it down and removing it, and they package it inside their little micelles. So basically, the little tails that are sticking up at this point, once they've kind of grabbed onto something, they form back into the little sphere-like structures, and they like take the dirt with them inside. So they carry it away from the skin. The whole process is so gentle and so simple that it doesn't cause any damage to your skin. You never have to scrub at anything. It just breaks it down with like a gentle pass across it. Sometimes you can kind of like hold it in place if you've got stubborn makeup and it'll help break it down and then just a little swipe away and it'll remove it. You never have to scrub. There's nothing hard in here that exfoliates or removes any part of the skin. And because it's so gentle, it's not gonna remove too many natural oils from your skin and leave you with dry skin. I've never had a problem with that since I've been using this. Generally, you don't need to rinse micellar water from your face. It's absolutely fine to just use it and leave it. But if you do have sensitive skin, you may find that just like splashing your face with water afterwards or just rubbing over with just a wet, regular water cotton ball pad um, can help you and reduce any chance of irritation or dry skin or anything like that. And so that's how a liquid that looks and smells and acts a hell of a lot like water can actually remove your makeup with ease. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something from this and hopefully it wasn't too kind of like boring or weird. I know some of you aren't really into the makeup and kind of skincare side of stuff, but I thought it would be really interesting to kind of look at the science behind why this stuff works and how this stuff works. If you do want to see more of these kinds of videos. I know this one was quite basic and simple today. Some of them are going to be a little bit more complex. Some of them are going to be nice and easy like this. I've got a few ideas for things I want to do. One in particular is that I want to look at anti-wrinkle creams and see if they even work. How do they work? And is there any difference between like the cheap ones and the expensive ones? Let's have a look at kind of, you know, are you getting what you're paying for? I think that could be a really interesting one. So let me know if you want to see more of this series and if it's something that you like and something that you enjoy. I really do appreciate your feedback. Sorry, my chest squeaking every time I move. Um, I really do appreciate your feedback and it means so much to me. Also, if you liked this video, you might want to check out my merch store. I have this amazing new t-shirt there uh, that says Ginger Bimbo across it in big letters. Um, it's kind of a stupid in-joke from, um, I got a lot of comments after I dyed my hair from people calling me a blonde bimbo, and I was like, look, I'm ginger. <laughs> and I was like, there's a thing on Twitter, and I was like, oh, I guess ginger bimbo just doesn't have the same ring to it. So now I'm reclaiming the term ginger bimbo, and anyone can be a ginger bimbo. It doesn't matter your hair color, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter anything. We can all be ginger bimbos. Just because I like makeup and fun stuff, doesn't mean I'm any less smart than anyone else. Now I kind of, I like the idea of kind of reclaiming insults and kind of been like, no, screw that. You're gonna try and insult me? I'm gonna take that back for myself and be like, yeah. It's my absolute favorite thing and I've got one of my own and I had a lot of fun designing it and making it and I have a lot of fun wearing it. So um, if you want to do that, you can check that out in my merch store and I would really, really appreciate that. I've also got a ton of other designs on there, um, all of which I've worked on myself and I'm really proud of and really happy with. So you can check those out if you want, but no pressure or anything. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you again soon. Huge thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, with a special thank you going to Data Jack, Trace Rawls, Gambit and Chauffeur, Liv's Pantyhose Addiction, Mark Darner, Christian Berg, Natalie Roma, Simon Lund, Jamin Shepard, Robert Corte, Peter Karak, Sir Michael Moore, Christina the Atheist, Sage Valorial, and Lauren Hart. You guys and everyone supporting me on Patreon are absolutely amazing and I couldn't do this without you, so thank you so much. And remember, if you are supporting me on Patreon, you can get exclusive access to my Discord server where you can come join in the conversation. So hopefully I'll see you guys over there. And thank you all so much.